Larry the Eldritch Abomination inspired by Art Man has two different mouths, which, though they look similar, are animated differently. One of them will swap between different models for the nine mouth shapes. And the other one will morph between them using shape keys. Okay, so uh, first you want to download Rhubarb Lip Sync. Link in the description. And you want to unzip the file and remember where you put it. You next want to download the Blender add-on, Rhubarb Lip Sync for Blender. Link in the description. And then you want to boot up Blender and install this add-on by going to File menu, user preferences, add-on, install from file, double click the file, tick the tick box. And use this to find the Rhubarb folder you've created earlier and find the Rhubarb XE or whatever the equivalent is for your operating system. Save. You can also download the files used for this tutorial. Well, the Rhubarb Lip Sync add-on for Blender works with a pose library, and a pose library is only a thing for an armature, so somehow we've got to make an armature trigger all these different face shapes. So I'll start off by creating an armature consisting of a single bone. And I personally prefer the stick display. I think it's easier to make out and we'll put names on them. This bone is called A. So this is how I'm setting up the armature for these shapes. And you know what? I'm going to move it to a separate layer because these shapes are slightly distracting. So I'm basically going to start off by creating nine of these. all in a row and I'm going to name them and they're going to be called A, B, C, G, D, H and X and this one's called a009 because they're already one called A. I'm going to rename that A now. There was when I re when I named it A, there was already another one called A. So that's why I put the the dot o o nine on. Right, so that's sorted. I'm now going to bring these back up and I'm going to select all of these using Shift right click to select them all and Alt G to put them all in the center. So they're all kind of overlapping with each other. That's fine. That's what we want for now. Right, we need the um, outliner now. And I'm going to go with visible layers. So A, and we want to select the armature and go to pose mode. So we now A, select bone A, control parent to bone. And I think somewhere down the line, we want to go to the armature buttons and select X-ray as well. So we can, so that we can see it through the other stuff. So B, B, don't worry if more than one bone is selected there. It will only, it will only actually attach it to one bone. So now I have nine mouth shapes all on top of each other, all parented to a different bone here. So right now I have to create a pose library. Actually, I've got one there. Right, that's okay. So basically I have to create a pose library with a series of poses in it called ABCDFGHX. Each one will consist of one of these being the original size and all the others scaled down to zero. I'm actually going to click here, whoops, I'm going to click there, and now I get a list of the bones which mysteriously are not in alphabetical order, but I'm fine with that, I'm just not going to worry about that now. And more so, this is going to be set to individual origins. So, this lot, everyone apart from A, scale to zero. And that, and then we need to select A as well, and then that, Add new is A. And now Alt S. I'm going to select all apart. Alt S is unscale. So I'm now going to select all of them apart from B. Scale zero. 
select we can use a a to select all of them again add new b you get the general idea Now we have a whole load of shape keys. So I'm now going to drag that up there and that down there so we can see them all. So we can press A, that one, that's number A. So press any one there and we get, whoa, something's not right there. Right, I see what's happened there. That object there should be parented to this one here, should be parented to bone F, but it's actually parented to bone E. So what I'm going to do while it's in while it's in this state with it scaled up, I'm going to select it and going to go Alt Parent, uh, Clear Parent, Keep Transformation. And now if I if I select this and go to F, I've got to select all the bones. So all the bones selected. Press F. So now I can now select that one and that one and control p parent control p parent to bone right so this is all working we can now drag that up there drag that down there oh and i've already put all of the mouth shapes in correctly already earlier but if you haven't you basically each of these you select whichever mouth shape is appropriate if you scale up here we can get to see the um, the phoneme name as well as whichever one here and we can stick in a sound file and a dialogue file and the start frame for the animation and run rhubarb lip sync so this is the file pipes after provided um, this is basically frozen in the state just before you run rhubarb lip sync so you can use it for testing and that okay except that there are actually a few more things to do first of all we need to make sure that we're on AV sync this means uh, when we play back using that play button or alt A we'll play the visuals and the audio in sync with each other as you can imagine this is absolutely essential for lip sync Okay, well the next thing we want to do is we want to actually be able to, we want to load the sound file into the blend file so that we can actually hear it as we play back. Also fairly essential for this, I'm going to drag this up and I'm going to go to the video sequence editor and I'm going to press that button. Um, this is basically a video editor. In that black space there, we would see a preview if we had strips of video down here but we're just using audio so I'm just going to go for that one that's our preview there I'm going to use shift A to add a sound file which is this one here also provided we can see that it's if we right click on the ends of it we can see that it starts on frame one now oh, we can't actually move that there um, you can see that it starts on frame one and ends on frame 150 and fortunately, so does the blend file, but we could change that if it didn't match up, right? We can click on these and go to frame 100. Let's go back to frame 50, 150. You get the general idea. I'm also gonna press that little plus there and press the draw waveform button. And I like to be able to see that. I think it makes it clearer. So now we're actually ready to run it. So first of all, I want to, right, so we want to select whichever rig controls the mouth and we go into pose mode and we want to select all the bones that control the mouth. I'm going to use the C button and do that. Now, here I could have just pressed A twice because the only bones in this rig control the mouth. But if you're actually creating a character um, well, it might be that you create a separate rig to control the mouth. That's like a completely legitimate thing to do. However, it might be that the mouth bones are part of a larger rig. 
which is why I encourage you to use the circle button to select the mouth related bones. OK, so now we get to scroll down here. Can you tell from how I'm talking that this is like the fourth time I've done this bit? Um, and we get to load up the sound file. And we get to load up the dialogue file, which is basically a text file with the words that the guy speaks, the words that the thing speaks. So this this is it. It's, it's just a text file with the words that the thing speaks. And we also notice that it starts on frame one. So we're going to set that. Otherwise, the um, lip sync would be a frame fast. And now we get to press run lip sync. And you can tell that it works because nothing happens. And now these little yellow keyframes have popped up. It's worked. Except that it's doing that. Which is, what? what is that? I don't want that to happen. As we remember from earlier, the way this works is it scales all the pipe sections up and down, in and out, in and out of existence to make it cut between one mouth and the next. The thing is, at the moment, it's doing it smoothly, which is not what we want. We want it to just be this one, nah, scale to zero, that one, scale to zero. You get the general idea. For this, I'm going to swap this video sequence editor for the graph editor. And I'm just going to press the home key. So at the moment, it's all curves. What we want it to be, if we go to key, easing, no, no, interpolation mode, constant. We now see it cuts between them, which is exactly what we were after. The sister tutorial to this, which deals with my other mouth, which tweens with shape keys, will soon slide onto YouTube. Be sure to subscribe not to miss it. I also feed on your likes and comments. Feed me well!